Hello everyone and welcome to Simple Rockets 2. I've been playing this game during live streams while my heavily modded installs of Kerbal Space Program are loading, and this video contains some of that early live experimentation. Unfortunately, I can't include the game audio because my own Twitch chatter was mixed in with it, and that wouldn't make much sense in the context of this video. So I'm sorry about that, but as compensation I can offer the most evil rocket I've ever designed, which you'll see later in this video. First, let me talk about the design I'm working on here. Very quickly, after taking a look at our three chemical rocket engine choices, it was clear to me that the Mage engine was practically useless. Compared to five Pixie engines, it has the same thrust, but far less efficiency and a specific impulse even an ancient solid rocket motor would be ashamed of. It has higher mass and higher cost. So the rocket I decided to build would have one Pixie engine on the upper stage, 4 on the 2nd stage, and 25 on the 3rd stage, and be shaped like a small N1 rocket. Its first stage had 1,250 kilonewtons of thrust, so roughly capable of lifting 125 tons. Now at this juncture, I'm probably the wrong person to do a tutorial on this, though I hope that Simple Rockets 2 encourages more people to get into the whole space thing. It is accessible. As Kerbal is right now, it's a little bit complicated because it's gone through a lot of development, and most of the people who got into Kerbal Space Program have sort of um, absorbed the new developments along the way, gradually, and so it's maybe a little bit more daunting for somebody to jump into it right now, whereas Simple Rockets 2 is basically where Kerbal was at 0.14, something around there, and... Well, here the lack of sound is a little bit disappointing, but that's what liftoff looks like in Simple Rockets 2, and that's my rocket painted in black and red. You can do custom paint jobs fairly easily in this, that's one of the nice things. One of the not-so-nice things is the way you control the rockets, which is obviously more meant for um, touchpad sort of things, uh, whereas I, I didn't really like that. I, I think you can control- you can configure a joystick and all. I just haven't quite figured it out. I was trying to use those little, uh, well, right, what you see right there, those little axes to rotate it, and that was very awkward. Uh, but uh, this is a game made for PC. Simple Rockets 1 was made for mobile, so they're sort of adapting it and sort of making it a full PC game, and this is not a mobile game right now, though they could probably port it back. This is a PC game running on Unity, and so hopefully we'll have modability and everything like that. It has some obvious graphic pluses and some obvious issues like not as much data on this screen, at least not as much as I would like, and of course not a real nav ball and there isn't really an SAS system and anyway, uh, you'll see that little orange bar at the bottom, the curve is actually our thrust, our throttle, and then the blue one is the fuel. Interesting thing, it didn't have thrust occlusion, which means that when I accidentally had the upper engine, uh, upper stage engines running, uh, they ran, and they were actually providing thrust for us uh, while running, and they consumed fuel and did not blow up the first stage, so that's an interesting point. Um, there are little things like that, uh, lots of physics things that need to be improved very obviously. The size of the home planet is roughly 2.5 times that of Kerbin, it seems, at least judging from the velocity it takes to get to orbit, maybe up to three times. Um, surface gravity seems to be regular Earth gravity or regular Kerbin surface gravity as well. And here we are, uh, trying to get to the moon here, but because my upper stage is actually lit, my, my staging was incorrect, though it provides some interesting experimental data about the physics in the game, but anyway, uh, I depleted the fuel in the upper stages such that I didn't get to do what I wanted to do here, and I will fix staging for a subsequent launch and we'll try and land on the moon is what I'm trying to do. I am trying to land on the moon, though not, you know, not with landing legs and everything, I was trying to land directly on the engine bell. But this time was a bus. You can see, it shows, uh, first of all, the line that's closer to the moon is actually our plot, our maneuver. And unfortunately, it doesn't show the Delta V required for a maneuver in the flight screen. It only shows it on the map screen, so that's another issue. That's at least something Kerbal does for us. It shows it on the flight screen instead of just the map screen. But um, our real path is only... It only shows it up to periapsis, and only when you get to periapsis 
does it show you the rest of the path? So there you see the path appearing after I pass Periapsis, and you can see the little icon for my ship. Uh, so that's unusual. Another unusual choice is that the Periapsis and Apoapsis heights only seem to appear on this when I have throttle applied. I don't know if there's a setting there, hopefully there's a setting there and I just have it incorrectly set. But anyway, at this point I decided that I would try something uh, to test the graphic limitations of this, uh, the frame rate limitations. I wanted to put a lot of parts, a lot of complicated parts on my rocket to slow it down, you know, to cause frame rate issues. And looking through the part list, I figured that these test dummies would be the most physically complicated things to try and add. So I added a lot of them, and so this is the most evil rocket. We've got all these test dummies strapped to the rocket. It sort of evoked Mad Max in a way, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a quite gruesome rocket. I mean, it's all menacing in black and red, and now it's got all these test dummies strapped around it. And might might not be safe for the ratings agencies, actually. But anyway, uh, here we go. Let's see how this works. Uh, now, since I wasn't getting any thrust from the upper stages anymore, um, it was a little bit slow off the pad. Uh, you can see it's not climbing very quickly at all. Lots of billowing, billowing smoke. That's nice. It's nice to have billowing smoke. And uh, the sound was quite loud. I had to turn it down, actually. But uh, And again, we have 25 engines here right now. And we've got those... Uh, bodies, I guess we can call them bodies, strapped to the side of the rocket, and we will see how they go. Um, obviously this is not aerodynamically sophisticated because with far definitely those bodies would rip off, right? The, the test dummies would definitely rip off of the rocket. And there is ragdoll physics on them, but that's about it. So here we go, climbing as smoothly as I can. Interestingly, the Space Center is far inland, and if you're going east, you have to go quite a ways over land in order to get to over the ocean, so not the best launch site ever. Uh, there are our four engines on the second stage, and I'll try and take a closer look at the test dummies on the second stage there. We've got solar panels on the top stage, so those are those squares, obviously. Interesting red-tinted solar panels. But, yeah, you, you can sort of see the test dummies wiggling. And, yep, uh, some of them twitching there. Yep, uh, so I, I, I consider this the evilest rocket I've ever made. Oh, is there five engines? I think there might be five engines on this stage. So, it's uh, one pixie, five pixies, twenty-five pixies. That makes sense. That That's what I would consider a good ratio anyway. So, yep. And, oh, I put some extra pistons. Those are sort of sticking out there. This game does come with pistons, so you can do some good robotics work with that. And finally, we're at our final stage, still trying to make orbit here. But this final stage does have a lot of Delta V, as we'll see. I don't know exactly how much Delta V it actually takes to transfer to the moon efficiently yet. I haven't done a perfect orbit and plot. If you haven't noticed already, basically there are really strong reaction wheels on this. So, turning is on a dime, more or less, and you don't need RCS unless you need to dock. Uh, so, that is the situation at the moment. I don't know how strong the reaction wheels are, I didn't see any number about that. But, here we are around the moon, and this time I got a lot closer. There aren't any astronauts or kerbonauts or anything like that. The test dummies are as close as we get. And here, with 10% of our fuel remaining on this stage, I attempt a landing. You can see the surface velocity creeping up as our altitude, uh, altitude goes down. Unfortunately, that altitude is not the radar altitude, as I eventually find out. So I haven't really learned enough about this game to do a tutorial on it, and I also want to put my mind in the frame of somebody coming to the whole rocket thing all fresh. And uh, that's gonna be tricky, because I've had so much time with Kerbal Space Program. So I want to be able to explain things you know, at, for somebody who's just coming to it, and that's a little bit hard for me. But uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll do some more Simple Rockets 2 videos. Uh, it's very enjoyable, and especially uh, while Kerbal is loading, as it turns out. But here I go, trying to make my best estimate for a landing on the moon. 
And uh, obviously this would never have balanced right on the... Well, physics here are a little bit weird. So maybe it would have balanced on the engine bell. The reaction wheel might have been strong enough to hold it, actually. But that's not what's going to happen. We are not going to make a nice little landing on the engine. No, that's not how it works. Because I don't know how high we are. And I don't have any suicide burn countdown. I eventually find out how high the terrain is, but only only too late. And to manage to land with that little few left over, you really need to have the suicide burn countdown. So I slow down and engines out at about 60 meters per second. Oh no, wait. 37 meters per second? Oh, that's pretty good, actually. In the heat of the moment, I wasn't really paying that much attention. I was just trying my best. Uh, there's the reaction wheel for you. And so I did manage to land the capsule. <laughs> Everything else ablated away, if you will. Litho braking at its best, folks. I can't tell you how amazingly satisfying that was. It was, it was a surprise. I thought it would just explode completely. But, I mean, that, that's about the same sort of little braking speed you can manage in Kerbal 2 if you're going to uh, have, you know, an entire stage cushion your landing. Now, of course, the downside to this is I can't get a Kerbal to pop out, or anybody to pop out and plant a flag at this point, which really have been satisfying. So, I did the next best thing, which is deploy the parachute. <laughs> I mean, we had to have something to mark the occasion. And yes, the parachutes currently seem to deploy in vacuum. So, yeah. Have I mentioned that the physics are in progress here? So, yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see how it develops. Uh, for now, it is a fun little diversion. And I'm still proud of myself for landing this on the moon. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.